There's a project that could change everything in the world of browsers. It's called Ladybird, and it's something entirely different from what we're used to. It's not yet another Chromium variant. It's not just another Firefox fork. Ladybird is a browser written completely from scratch in C++ with a simple but revolutionary idea to build a modern, secure, high-performance, and readable browser without dragging along 20 years of patches, dead code, and corporate compromises. Originally born as part of the Serenity OS operating system, Ladybird is now preparing to become cross-platform, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. But what makes it really interesting is not just that it's new, it's how it's been built. Ladybird is based on a set of libraries developed entirely in-house, each one designed to do its job properly, clearly, safely, and transparently. But a project this ambitious doesn't come out of nowhere. Leading Ladybird is a very interesting figure, Andreas Kling. A seasoned Swedish developer, Kling previously worked on KHTML for KDE, on Qt WebKit at Nokia, and later joined Apple's WebKit team. In short, he knows exactly what it means to work deep inside a rendering engine. But in 2018, he decided to change his life. He left his job, took time to focus on himself, and during a difficult period started a project that was almost like therapy. That project became Serenity OS, an entire operating system written from scratch in C++, with the goal of being simple, coherent, and understandable. An experiment that over time turned into something much bigger. Then in 2022, Ladybird was born, a completely independent browser, free from dependencies on Chromium, Gecko, or WebKit. Built using the same modular libraries from Serenity OS, but with a clear ambition to become a modern, secure, and truly open browser. Kling isn't just a great developer, he's also a fantastic communicator. He publishes weekly videos on YouTube showing the project's progress, bug fixes, new features, and improvements. No filters. Everything is public, clear, and readable. And thanks to this transparency, Ladybird has started to receive strong support from the community. In 2024, the Ladybird Browser Initiative was created, a nonprofit organization to manage the browser independently from Serenity OS. Today, the project is entirely funded through GitHub sponsors, receiving direct donations from users, enthusiasts, and even companies like Shopify and Chris Wanstrath, co-founder of GitHub. But Kling is no longer alone. Around Ladybird, a small but very active group of developers has formed. There's Linus Grow, for example, a German developer and one of the main contributors to the LibJS JavaScript engine. He started as a self-taught Serenity OS contributor and was even invited to the TC39 committee that sets ECMAScript standards. His work on parsing, semantics, and debugging is among the most precise in the project. Then there's Aiden Horowitz, who has worked on implementing advanced CSS features and improving the layout engine. He also contributed to standards like the new Temporal API for handling dates in JavaScript. Ali Mohamed Poor is a key contributor to WebAssembly support via Libwasm and has done major work on implementing CSS Grid and Flexbox, both essential to making Ladybird competitive in modern web layout rendering. Over time, Ladybird has grown beyond a solo effort. Around Andreas Kling, a small but highly skilled community of developers has formed, contributing code, fixing bugs, implementing new features, and pushing the project forward at an impressive pace. Together, this group represents something rare, a truly open source project built without corporate logic, without advertising pressure, and without ulterior motives. Just passion, technical skill, and one clear idea to put the user back at the center. Now let's talk about Ladybird itself. Let's start with LibWeb, the heart of the browser. LibWeb is Ladybird's rendering engine. It's responsible for reading HTML and CSS and turning them into a visual, navigable web page. So far, nothing unusual. But what sets it apart from the giants like Blink, used by Chrome and Edge, WebKit, used by Safari, or Gecko, used by Firefox, is its architectural clarity. Traditional engines are enormous, born in the early 2000s, and continuously modified to support all kinds of hacks, proprietary extensions, and compatibility quirks. In Chrome, for example, there are entire code sections that exist only to support special behavior for Facebook or YouTube. LibWeb, on the other hand, was born in 2023 and follows modern standards from day one. Every part is modular, readable, and designed to be understandable even for non-specialist developers. A concrete example? 
the layout engine in LibWeb, responsible for calculating the position of each element on a page. In Blink or WebKit, this is a monster of hundreds of classes and special cases, filled with flags, workarounds, and layered optimizations. In LibWeb, layout is handled following W3C standards, with a clean and separate class structure. And when they implemented Flexbox, they didn't take shortcuts. They followed the spec step by step, ensuring consistency and predictability. Another big difference is that LibWeb separates the phases of parsing, styling, layout, and painting. In traditional browsers, these steps are often interwoven. For example, a change to the DOM can automatically trigger layout and rendering updates. This makes debugging difficult and unpredictable. In Ladybird, each phase is independent. You can stop the browser after HTML parsing and inspect the results before anything else kicks in. That's a huge advantage for developers and researchers. And it gets better. LibWeb doesn't use the GPU for rendering. While Chrome and Firefox depend on complex systems like Skia or Cairo and rely on OpenGL or Vulkan, Ladybird renders entirely in software using its own internal library, LibGFX. This makes the browser more portable, more predictable, and less vulnerable to GPU driver bugs. That's not a small detail. Now let's move to LibJS, the JavaScript engine. LibJS is also built completely from scratch. It doesn't rely on V8 from Chrome or SpiderMonkey from Firefox. It implements ECMAScript standards rigorously and is continuously tested. The goal here isn't to be the fastest engine in the world, but rather to be precise, readable, and secure. Again, each component, parsing, compilation, execution, garbage collection, is cleanly separated. The virtual machine behind LibJS is designed to be understandable and debuggable. No black boxes, no aggressive optimizations that make debugging impossible. It's an ideal environment for education, experimentation, and building a browser that doesn't compromise. Then there's LibWASM, Ladybird's WebAssembly engine. Instead of relying on existing runtime stacks, Ladybird implements WebAssembly support internally. This is a major technical achievement. WebAssembly is a binary format used to run high-performance code in the browser, like games or scientific apps. In Chrome or Firefox, it's deeply integrated into the JS engine and full of complex native optimizations. Ladybird takes a safer and more readable approach. Each WASM module runs in an isolated environment with limited memory access and a minimized attack surface. This boosts both security and portability. Another notable component is LibRegex. This library handles regular expressions, used heavily in JavaScript and HTML parsing. Like the others, it's written from scratch, optimized for speed and precision, and integrated cleanly into the rest of the system. It's a great example of the internal coherence that defines Ladybird's design philosophy. But Ladybird doesn't stop at its code base. The overall architecture of the browser is radically different, too. Each tab runs as a separate process. That means if one tab crashes, the rest keep working. It's an idea that exists in Chromium, too, but Ladybird takes it even further with tighter isolation and simpler design. Even image handling and network connections are done separately. Processes for downloading resources, decoding images, and executing code are all modular. This improves performance, but more importantly, it enhances security. Each component of the browser has only the permissions it needs. If something goes wrong, it's much harder for it to become a critical vulnerability. And now we get to the most important part. Why Ladybird is different from everything else out there. Chrome, Edge, Opera, Brave, they're all based on Chromium, and therefore on Blink. Firefox is the last major browser with its own engine, but its code base is old, heavy, and under corporate pressure. Ladybird, on the other hand, is lightweight, independent, and free of any compromise with advertising, telemetry, or big tech interests. It doesn't collect data. It doesn't track users. It doesn't bake in hidden APIs for DRM or ads. It's not tied to Google. It doesn't try to control what you can do with your browser. Ladybird is built by people who believe the web should be free, transparent, and user controlled. The project is gaining attention and momentum. The number of supporters is growing day by day including individual users and companies who choose to donate, because this project survives solely through donations. And for that reason, it's important to support it, because it represents a real hope for a browser future that's not locked behind corporate walls. Ladybird isn't ready for daily use yet. It doesn't support all extensions, nor all web standards. 
but it's evolving at a rapid pace. It's a serious, technical, and radical project. And maybe it's the greatest hope we have for a different kind of browser. A browser that doesn't study you, doesn't spy on you, doesn't manipulate you. A browser that doesn't hide behind millions of lines of obscure code, but shows you exactly what it does, how it does it, and why. And in a world where digital freedom is increasingly under threat, maybe this really is the next big thing.